Congratulations on graduating to the final episode of You Have Power Over Your Brain Chemicals. I'd love to hear your success stories as you build your brain power, so please add a comment below or write to me on the contact form at the Inner Mammal Institute. And be sure to check out our many resources to support you in building new happy habits, including books, blogs, podcasts, daily social media tips, a discussion group, slideshows, infographics, a training certification, and a five-day happy chemical jumpstart. It's all at innermammalinstitute.org. The most valuable skill you can have is self-soothing, the ability to calm yourself after an agitation. If you believe in your own self-soothing skills, you can deal with whatever comes along. Of course, many ways to soothe yourself can hurt you in the long run, and every self-soother loses its power over time, so it's essential to know how to wire in a new self-soothing skill. To feel the power of your self-soothing circuits, imagine you're a baboon chased by a lion and you save yourself by climbing a tree. That tree saved your life and the neurochemical surge wires you to scan for trees whenever you feel threatened. Just seeing one makes you feel better. Then one day you see a poisonous snake in a tree. Now you don't feel safe anywhere, and you're constantly torn between one threat and another. You need a new self-soothing strategy, but there are no easy choices. Fortunately, you have been building self-soothing skills since your moment of birth. A newborn baby surges with cortisol because it has needs it can't meet, but when it hears its mother's footsteps, it starts to feel better even though it doesn't yet know what a foot is. Its dopamine turns on when it hears a sound that was linked to relief in its past experience, as limited as that was. As the years pass, each child experiences physical pain, social pain, and whatever relieves your distress in that moment wires you to expect relief from that. In puberty, your brain was full of myelin, and whatever relieved a threat at that time built a self-soothing superhighway. More highways came from your mirror neurons, which took in the self-soothing circuits of the people around you. Sometimes they are hard to make sense of, but they're easy to repeat once the circuit is built. Distraction is a popular self-soothing strategy because it works. Anything that absorbs your attention can divert electricity away from your threat circuits. That wires you to expect relief from more of that distractor. Of course, distraction doesn't solve the underlying problem, and a baboon would die if it stopped to smell the flowers with a lion in pursuit. But a big human cortex finds a new problem to solve as soon as it relieves the last one so you can end up with an endless sense of threat. Distraction is one way to relieve it. The brain learns from whatever works. Whatever transforms a bad feeling into a good feeling builds a huge pathway. That's why your old self-soothing habits turn on so fast you don't even realize you felt threatened. You might insist you were not feeling threatened in that moment when electricity rushed into your old self-soothing circuit. It happens that fast. You have power over your self-soothing choices when you notice the moment when you turn them on. That makes threatened feelings more noticeable too, alas, but they feel less threatening now that you know they're just electricity flowing because it can. No matter what self-soothing strategy you use, it eventually loses its power because our brain habituates to old rewards. Your brain evolved to focus on unmet needs because that promotes survival. This is why new rewards have power while expected rewards lose their power. Habituation makes it hard to appreciate what you have and easy to end up with frustration. You can get more reward from your coffee or your glass of wine if you go without them on alternate days. You can increase your self-soothing power when you have a wide range of self-soothing skills to choose from. You can wire in a new skill by repeating it for 45 days. You can walk backwards for two minutes. You can read a novel standing up for five minutes. You can develop one of your talents for 10 minutes. You can research your next adventure while deeply inhaling your favorite smell. 
The next time you feel anxious or angry, you may not feel like walking backward while inhaling citrus oil. But if you do it for 45 days, your brain will, it will start expecting to feel good instead of expecting to feel bad. My favorite new self-soothing skill is to watch a video in a foreign language while flailing my arms and legs. This distracts me so completely that it wipes the slate clean. And I discovered my next great alternative on a trip to Peru, a cocoa tea that you make from the shells of cocoa beans. Yes, it's a hot chocolate with no calories. So what if you plan a new self-soothing skill and then find pizza and beer in your hand before you know how it got there? Just put it down and act on your new plan. Then put the pizza in the freezer and marinate a chicken in the beer. You will learn to seize the moment before your freezer fills with pizza if you keep committing to that new skill. It may not feel good at first, but gradually it will feel natural. You can feel good when you do things that are good for you. I'm so glad you could learn from these videos. Please share them with everyone who can understand them and take part in the many resources of the Inner Mammal Institute.